Our number three, Dennis and Callahan. We know there was one evil person at the Boston Marathon on Monday, but we also know just as much there were thousands of great people at the Boston Marathon. First responders, firefighters, police, EMTs, ambulance drivers, just citizens trying to help people out. And who jumped right into the fray with somebody that uh, ends up making a personal connection with somebody in Jerry's life. His name is Carlos Arandondo. Uh, his one son was killed in action in Iraq in 2004. A second, second son, grief-stricken, took his own life. He's a Samaritan, a Gold Star father, and a Amer- uh, member of the American Red Cross. He was the man who wheeled Jerry's best friend's nephew to the ambulance and saved his life. Carlos Arandondo joins us on the AT&T hotline, AT&T 4G LTE. Thanks for taking some time this morning, Carlos. How are you, my friend? Of course, good morning to you and everybody else. Good morning. Uh, as a way of background, what brought you to the Boston Marathon finish line that day? What were you doing there, Carlos? Well, Turi National Guards start walking that morning at 4 a.m. to reach around the finish area at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, mm-hmm. which we were, my wife and I, we were waiting for them by giving American flags to all the people there. One of the, each of the National Guard was dedicating the war to a fallen soldier. So that's why we was there. We was just across the street from the site of the first explosion. And, and, and uh, before 3 o'clock, the first explosion took place. And then, you know, I jumped the fence right away, you know, and run into the people who really got hurt. And I jumped the second fence in order to, to see what's, what was happening there, you know, and and then I see a lot of bodies, a lot of people with broken limbs and missing limbs, and and then we were sort of stuck because of the fence, you know, we was needed to remove the fence mm-hmm. like that we can get the emergency units in the site. And and then I concentrate pretty much in, in comfort the people on the ground, you know, the ambulance on the way, the you okay, and everything, everything, everything is okay, just coming down people. And then I concentrate on a, on a young man, Jeff Brother, who was really uh, lost both of his legs, and he was in serious injuries. Tell us. Bleeding a lot. What, what did you do for Jeff Bowman? You saw him there. You knew he was seriously hurt. We see the picture of you escorting him, talking to him, holding the artery on the way to the ambulance. When you found him, where, where was Jeff? What kind of condition was he in? Well, Jeff was con- conscious. He was moving, trying to move around, and... He was in pain and and he was looking for help there and, and the floor moving around. So I just went in, in I I kneel in my in my in my knees and I just talk just start coming him down to let him know, you know, help us on the way that he's okay, trying to take take him time like that he don't see what was happened to his legs to right. to let you, I, he was conscious and, and I and I really calmed him down. You talked to him. Was he talking to you? I mean, did he know? No, he was looking. At, uh, uh, he was listening very well. He was a very good listener the whole time, and he was awake the whole time. He really, uh, is, he really is a strong man. So he was on his back, and he hadn't seen what had happened to his lower legs. Is that right, Carlos? It, he was trying to move, but I avoid for him to see what happened to his legs. Right. Like that, more, no more, a lot of blood was coming out, out of his out of his limbs. So I reach a, a sweater in the ground, and I rip it apart. And another Samaritan who came along to my side, he helped me out to, to stop the bleeding there. So you put tourniquets, you and a, and a, and a fellow Samaritan, put yeah, tourniquets correct. on and both of Jeff's legs. And I, we put tournaments there. You, right. ha- you held the artery in your hand, correct? We see the picture of you with the femoral artery. Yeah, as soon as I pick him up, him in the wheelchair, I, somebody came running with a wheelchair. I grabbed it right away because I know Jeff was needed to get out of there as soon as possible. So I put Jeff in, in the wheelchair, and then I just start holding his artery by turning around the piece of rope in my hand like that, the bleeding stopped. Uh-huh. Hmm. Now, you, you escorted him to an ambulance? Is that what you did? Well, I, I scored as far to the ten. But then uh-huh. everybody was asking me, right here, right here, right here. I said, no, an ambulance, an ambulance, an ambulance. I was pushing him out through the whole 10, maybe like 70 yard, 80 yard long way just to get there, you know? Well, you don't know this yet, I don't think, but he's doing well. Uh, have you had a chance to, to get updated on Jeff's condition? I know, I know you haven't talked to him yet. Well, no, I haven't talked to him. His mother 
uh, already tried to reach me. His father right, tried to reach me, and I'm looking forward to, to, to let him know their family, how, how a strong son they have. I, uh, we're going to make that happen. They're, they're dying to meet you. They're dying to thank you, uh, Carlos. But your story is just amazing. We ser- first saw the, the picture on Drudge, and there you are with your cowboy hat, and everyone says, yeah, see the guy with the cowboy hat. And then we learn more about you. We realize what kind of tragedy you've been through. You've lost two sons. Correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the National Guard runners was running for your for your son, Alexander, who uh, lost his life in, uh, was Iraq. it Iraq? Mm-hmm. That's correct, exactly. It also was one of the Samaritans, suicidal prevention, right. a woman who was running on behalf of my son, Brian, too. Wow, so one runner from the National Guard was running for your son who died in Iraq. Another that's, another runner was running for your son, Brian, who, who took his own life. That's correct, for suicidal prevention. Wow. And you were there to root them all on. And we were there giving American flags to the spectators. Oh, right. And what did you do after you left, Jeff, after you got him to the tent? I went back, to, I went back inside again trying to find uh, my wife who was in the, in, the, in the bleachers, in the stand, and trying to figure out where my friends was and trying to see if you talk to the, the, the National Guard members. Carlos, can you estimate how much time elapsed from when you got to Jeff, or maybe be- better put, from when the explosion took place till you got Jeff to the ambulance? Was it was it two minutes, five minutes? How how long of a time here? The first explosion went on, and immediately I jumped the fence. The second explosion went on, and I was already crossing the street and still smoking the sidewalk. Uh, uh, it took, it took it's, it, time is very hard to to notice right, this right. happened, but the, you know what took really time was to remove the debris, you know the fence sure. and all that. I will say, you know, it, 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 I reached in the, in the few minutes. The, yes. How'd you know to to hold the uh, femur lottery? Oh, I don't know. I'm a, a Red Cross member. Oh, right. I'm a volunteer for the Red Cross, right. and and I and pretty much, you know, we we go to sites where we need some time, we need to help people. Did it ever occur to you that your life might have been in danger when the second bomb went off, that there might be a third or a fourth, or you didn't just think about that? Oh, no. When I jumped the first thing and I started running, I pray God to protect me and everybody else. Yeah. And and Jerry asked this question, but I, I don't know if I heard the answer. Did Jeff say anything to you at all at any point from when you got to him to when you turned him over to the EMTs at the ambulance? Did he speak? I no, Jeff was very awake and he was listening to everything I was saying. He was a, a he was a very strong person, you know. I, in the end, I asked for his name to make sure I give that name to the to the re, to the to the, to the emergency unit there. Mm-hmm. When, when did you when did you finally get home? I know you're from Roslyn. Day. When did you finally get home on Monday, Carlos? Nine p.m. Nine p.m. Did you still have blood on you? I still have blood on me, you know. The FBI came to my house yesterday. Yeah. They took my clothes, my shirts, and everything they needed to see. They they didn't take your cowboy hat, did they? No, they didn't. Oh, good. We <laughs> we didn't. need the cowboy hat. So, uh, are you? Uh, did you see the pictures of you and Jeff? Did you ever get to? I, mean, I know you you didn't realize uh, you were doing anything that was going to uh, make you famous. But uh, when did you realize that uh, everyone had seen what you'd done? Every, that you were a hero. Well, I'm still. Trying to not to think like that, you know. That I'm a hero. Uh, I'm, I I saw the picture very briefly, and and it's, it's very painful what, what what you see in the hat in there. Yeah, it well, is. Well, we know you uh, tragically. You lost two sons, and we know uh, you know that that will you'll never get over that. But I know Jeff Bowman Senior. I know Patty, his mother, are very grateful that they didn't lose their son, and and that's because of you, pal. Well, I think I think you know so many people you know really did such a good job. The emergency unit that was just around the corner that was one of the the, the best thing that, that, that happened there. You know, everybody was really doing something about it. Carlos, thank you very much. Thank you for what you did, and um, we I, have I, your number. We have your number. We are going to try you to get you and Jeff together with, with Jeff. Well, he's obviously still in the hospital. I think he's in surgery today, but uh, we'll get you guys together. They really, really want to thank you, my friend. Thank you very much as well. Thank you very much for keeping this information in the air. Carlos 